Hey guys, it's Avenger. Welcome back to the channel. And my god, this video has been a long time coming. This has been recorded Friday. But uh, as of still currently, the sim is choking on itself. Uh, data services are crippled beyond all belief. For some, not all. Uh, unfortunately for me, the even the live the world map is lagging. The in game it drops to one to two FPS. Uh, the servers have been absolutely savaged by people downloading the new update, the 40th anniversary, of course, and that includes this: the Blackbird slash Milvis Beaver. Oh boy! Oh boy! Yes, it is as good as we imagined and hoped, nay, dreamed, and that's offence. Let's go take a look at this beautiful beast, shall we? Right, let's go outside here. Yep, come on, outside. Now let me see if I can remember how to... No, my controller's decided it wants to choke on itself, so nothing's working right today. I'll have to use the keyboard. In terms of modelling, it is a beautiful, beautiful piece, which I expected, to be honest, even down to the weathering and wear and tear of this aircraft. She is absolutely stunning. This is exactly what I hoped for in a beaver. It looks the piece. It has zero performance impact. And it's just breathtaking all the way throughout. I'll try and get myself inside the cockpit without... Tap that. Uh, there we go. That's what we wanted. This is a stunning aircraft, I've got to say. Even down to the rear seat detail here. She is an absolute beauty. And... Yeah, that's a tablet. Now, of course, being a free aircraft, you've all played with this already. We've got doors at work. This is what I hoped for. I was expecting at most a probably amphib floats only beaver, which we would get that would probably have no tablet. But, you know, we even have chocks, cold covers, pito covers, yoke belts, tie downs. Mat spinner? Hmm, let's try a chrome spinner. Yeah, we have all the play toys we would want. Absolutely all of them. A bunch of great liveries, great little features like this. It is, for want of a better word, exactly what we wanted. I'll leave those on because there's a cool thing with those is that you can just go, oh, I'll click off that and I'll take off the cover and we're operational. Everything's working. Now this is the working title 513 and 413 here, which you can download for free from the marketplace, uh, which hugely upgrades your GPSs in the stock aircraft. Would you rather have uh, analog radios? You can have analog radios. And for some reason, since the update, this is all doubled up. They've moved them both to one screen. Same thing in the DC-3. There's, there's bugs with this update, of course, but uh, it is what it is now. All the functionality that we'd want in the 530 430 is working. Which is fantastic. Do we actually want... Uh, ooh, we have two VR heads. Do we perhaps want an ADF in there as well? Which is right down at the bottom. See? Everything works. That's the fuel cut off. I'll show you what that does in a second. But... We can even turn the interior from the seats we saw a second ago to cargo. Now, it would have been cool if we had a peering cargo in the back, which there may be. However, there is a slight bug with this right now. It's all fuel. <laughs> oh, we no, we, we have payload now. Okay, that's, that's different. I didn't see that before. Do we have anything appearing in the back? No. We're about to 20% there. And if we go to a passenger configuration. No, sadly no passengers appear. That would have been nice, wouldn't it, if that happened? But either way, we are good. So that bug is not a thing, but this is definitely a bug that I can somehow have like 20 stations on the fuel. Not sure what that's about, but there we go. Anyway, enough of the GPS. Let's turn that off. I wish we could actually remove it from the actual dash, but it is what it is. Right, beaver time. We're going to do some takeoffs and landings in the uh, this version, the wheeled version, and then we're going to have a look at some beaver flying in the float version and look up the nuances. Now, the beaver being an older aircraft, it can get a little bit spicy on the edge of the stall. This is not an aircraft I'd really like to drag down to that point. It can get a little bit... It wants to drop a wing. 
Now, one of the interesting factors is, as I go, let's hit full flaps here and go outside real quick. This version is equipped with flapperons, so you'll notice the, the flapperons, the ailerons, do sag. And this is full flaps, by the way, in the beaver. They are barn doors. You really aren't using these flying unless you're going super stall. It's too much. It's just a speed break at this point. All right, let's go back inside here. We'll retract those up to where we want them, which will be... On this runway, we've got plenty of room. Okay, we'll, we'll go with takeoff setting for flaps because it seems appropriate. Um, so, obviously, battery and searcher down here. Alternator battery. If your next master is there, these are all our lighting options. We've got parking brake right here. Fuel, front or centre or rear. I typically go front to centre to rear when I'm running Beaver's fuel starter and fuel booster. Now, the primer's down there. I think it's number four. There we go. And you'll actually notice when I do this, listen. Oh, doesn't do it. Let's see if we flip this off to another one again. If you're careful, you'll notice there is a tone shift between fuel in the lines and not in the lines. I don't think we're going to catch it this time. I think I was a little bit surreptitious on that one, but it will do it. And it sounds great. So, I'm going to use my uh, controls here to do this, but the starter, you will literally hold it up. Give us some juice. And you'll hear the tone and the, even the boost pump there as the engine catches and starts to draw fuel. So there is a... Details are really rich in this aircraft. Even down to that. Okay, so let's get ourselves ready for departure. We have got everything free and clear. Pedals are good. Parking brake is there. So cabin heat. Nope. Wrong thing. That's rattling. Rattling. All the various bits and pieces rattle. Even the paperwork in the side pocket rattle. It's, it's lovely. It really is. Okay, let's get her moving here. Um, now, the Beaver being a big wing, it will take off from tail down really forcing the tail up is something you can do if you want to go super short but it just doesn't need it we've got relatively calm winds today so we'll just depart this way we've got take off flap set turn my head on here okay there we are so we'll go to full power which here is just about top of uh, allowed maximum continuous manifold not even gonna lift it up the tail comes up naturally and we're already away. A little bit early there. Deliberately coming up quite soon. Trying to get her to just bite onto the air a little bit. Being a little bit more aggressive than I'd like to be in the beaver normally. All trims up there, by the way. Now, I've noticed some people having issues with the DC3 and trimming it. It will nose up unexplainedly. Watch your trim on that. You can get the trim to do various naughty things. You'll want a bit. You'll use a lot of trim to kind of when it's low power and it will get nose down. So on approach, you'll have too much trim, and when you take off again, it will have way too much trim, and it will shoot the nose up. So you've got to be careful of that. Now we're just going around the bend up ahead, and we're heading to. I forgot the name of it now, but it's a small grass strip, a couple of thousand feet of grass. We won't be using most of it, but I have got all my data turned off right now. I have this area loaded, which is useful, but okay, more power. I can afford to run almost full throttle at the moment on this because uh, we're at 4,000 feet, which, by the way, will affect performance when you're flying uh, short takeoff and landing, so be very aware. Naturally aspirated engine doesn't like high altitudes. The beef is very placid on the trim. And this aircraft first flew in 1947. Let's do a bit of history. Um, so it was originally when de Havilland, at the end of the war, they realised the military purchase market would shrink. So a lot of their military aircraft were going to become redundant. Now, basically, they decided, well, what do people want? And being a Canadian company, they reached out to a lot of Canadian pilots, and a lot of them being bush pilots. They wanted extra power and stall performance, and a design that could be fitted with wheel skews and floats. And they were like, well, this would be you poor cruise performance. And a lot of the pilots were like, well, as long as I'm faster than a sled dog, it's fine. And this is why you ended up with the, the aircraft that you have today. Now, they wanted things that are quite simple, but 
big doors, full-size doors on both sides, so whichever side you dock on, you can unload and load cargo. And that door is big enough for a 44-gallon Imperial oil drum to get rolled into the aircraft. It, it's a practical vehicle. It's a ton, one-ton truck. This thing has a R985 Wasp Jr. engine, a uh, nine-cylinder radial, 450 horsepower. Uh, it has an empty weight of 3,000 pounds and a heavy weight, a full weight, sorry, gross weight of uh, 4,000. 5,000, 5, giving us space for six passengers and or 2,000 pounds, nearly a 1,000 kilos of useful load, which is fantastically practical for an aircraft this size. So the power really is useful. These things will fly overloaded happily, and they regularly did and do. They're still in operation. Now, most of the world's militaries have gotten rid of them, of course, but yes, militaries operated them. The British Army even had them as spotter aircraft. They went on the Hillary expedition to Antarctica, the Trans-Antarctic expedition, and they assisted with that on skis. They are an all-weather, all-climate aircraft that will do absolutely everything. I think this is us up here on the left, although it could be just beyond the end of the inlet here. We'll take a look. We're starting to see... Uh, I'm not sure what I'm looking for here, but... Are we seeing the world disappear? We are seeing the world disappear. Okay, never mind. We'll turn around, we'll bring it back to Chilka Lake, and it's a tough landing here at Chilka Lake. I do have to have the data turned off, otherwise the sim will literally Taco Bell itself to death. If you understand that reference, you'll be equally disgusted as I am. If you don't understand that reference, uh, let's just say its insides are going to rapidly become its outsides through one of two orifices. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this aircraft is very sturdy. It's got a big wing, like we said earlier, like we saw, and she will really handle performance very well. Got my power pulled all the way back. We're going to make a long straighted approach here, and we're going to try and do it nice and short. Now, I'm going to use full flaps on this because I'm going to hang her on the edge and see what we can do with that. Now, there's obstructions at the start of the runway here at Chilka Lake, which is going to make it more difficult. I wanted to do it on the grass one so I can bring it in real low. Um, Obviously, when you've got that sort of diff approach angle issue, and we're talking of you know the over a 50 foot obstacle to landing sort of roll distance style situation, so we are going to be coming a little steeper. So I'm going to use a high wing angle for this approach. That's Chilka just above us there. And we're going to bring her in here and touch down, and then we'll do an immediate departure, short takeoff to show you just what she can really do. So I'm going to pull the power back here and let her start to drift. This is also an incredibly placid aircraft of water. And Blackbird did a fantastic job with how this thing handles in the water. This literally fits the category of, I can't believe this is free. Now, yes, Asobo essentially bought a bunch of payware aircraft to put in the sim. Fair enough. So these aren't, you know, what we'd expect as stock aircraft. They're, they're free with this update, but it's a 40th anniversary. It's essentially their gift to us. Now, this is absolutely a paywall quality aircraft, but it essentially is. There's the DC-3, all the aircraft that came. Some of them not so much. Like, the Jenny is a bit potato, i got to admit. Kind of crappy, but whatever. They kind of blew their load on a few aircraft in this update. Notably this and the... Uh, the Bell helicopter, fantastic. This, the DC-3, and a couple of others. Let's go full flaps here. This is where we're going to have to start putting on power to hold ourselves in the air. Now, notice the obstruction on the runway end there. I'm going to pull this power back here. So we're wanting to basically touch down around 55 miles an hour. 60 is kind of our stall point. We really want to keep an eye on that. It does like to drop a wing if you get a bit too aggressive, so we're going to have to manage this quite carefully. Now my power and my wing angle. See the little bit of a wobble there? She starts to want to kind of bite. Hold on to her here. There we go. Just ease her down here. Maybe I can slip between these two trees. We'll pretend they're not here for the time being. This going to be a better practical demonstration of the runway approach angle. There we go. Brakes, 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 flaps up. I'm going to want to ease off the brakes as we roll to a stop here. She will tip over. Oh, 
Nelly, come on. That's it. Good girl. Good girl. I've been gentle on the brakes here because I don't want to nose wheel the bloody thing. But there we go. Let's take a look at how long that was. Nope, that was the wrong button to press. Come on, press the right button. Okay. Big nose. Not bad. And that's 20% load on, so what we're talking about 400 pounds of payload? Not a lot, but at the same time, that's not a lot of runway, realistically. That's the end of the apron there we've used here at Chilka Lake. A um, couple of hundred feet, probably. This is a 4,000 foot runway, so we're talking 2,000, maybe 1,000. Okay, just over 1,000 feet, maybe. So, it will handle short distances. Let's see if we can take off in the same, shall we? Now, I am going to use takeoff flaps for this. Spin around. Spin your partner around and around. Run for an aviation hoe down here. Now, this is going to be bold. If I can make this work. I don't think I can, but I'm going to try it. If I got in here, I need to be able to get out, right? Okay. There we go. Come on. Nose over. A bit much nose over there. Ooh. Build speed. Build speed. Last second. And we're up and away. That was a little exciting. A bit more than I hoped for. But <laughs> it worked. Okay. Totally planned. So the aircraft will really take a handling. you kind of got to wait for it. You, you get attention to want to pull up early. She'll drop a wing if she's too, too low speed. Um... Give it every inch of runway you can if it's short. But she'll she'll take it. She will take it. This girl's a prize fighter and she will take a punch. Right, let's play with an amphibian, shall we? Okay, so we're here on the water at Chalker Lake again. And we're going to do some takeoffs and landings in the float version. So let's make sure all my instrumentos are in the right position here. Bloody levers like to reset themselves. Uh... Procedure is very much the same. We're going to run through this real quick just to kind of get it going here. So, there we go. Batteries on. Periodics are on. You can go away. Actually, you can't go away because I want to see you. We have a freaking canoe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have a canoe. Also, this is thing, this aircraft delivery itself, CFOBS, Ontario uh, Forests and Land, Land Agency. 8,800 flight hours on it before it retired in 99. Insane aircraft to be able to handle that sort of thing. But uh, let's pop back inside. We'll keep in the canoe because everyone loves a good canoe. Okay, that's all set. Let's get her started. Do, 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 do. Boom. You'll notice we're moving already. So let's get my head turned on here and let's get our water rudder engaged. Let's taxi out into the channel. She's very placid on the water with water rudders. Now, the big issue with this flight in water is it's about two feet deep. So you will bottom out the floats if you're too aggressive on your pitch in any stage of flight. And landings kind of need to be quite gentle. So we'll just taxi away here. Like I said, very placid. and moves very easily. And incredibly at low speed as well. So we're going to put some flaps down for takeoff. No, nope, a bit too much there. Once we get past the headland here, we'll be able to turn and depart. So we'll kill the power here. We're drifting onto the track we want. That will do just nicely. Okay, let's make sure we put this back up. You do not want those down when you're on water. Gear is confirmed up. Let's give us some beans. So back on the stick. But not too much. Let it get onto the step. Just let it run. Build your speed up. And is her back. It's not the worst performing float plane we've got on water. It's not perfect, of course, because 
the sober water is a little bit uh, creative. But she's not bad at all. Not at all. Absolutely lovely aircraft, in fact. There we go. Let's bring our that back. Put a bit more beans there. And she will fly absolutely lovely. Now, one thing we do want to establish here, as I smack my microphone, is they trail in the wind, see? They trail. <laughs> the mooring lines trail. It's the little details that make an aircraft great, and this is one of them. So we're going to bring around and we're going to do an approach here. So I'm going to figure eight us back in here. Not figure eight, I should say key holders back around. So we'll come out to this side of the uh, channel, swing her back around over that uh, bit of a bulge there and bring her back in. Even the texturing details, some people have said the texturing details better in the DC-3. I, I don't know, I think it's just busy. It's a really busy cockpit, it's easy to have a very good looking cockpit when it's full of stuff. The beef looks fantastic, I love it. Like, I really love it, It's it's exactly what it should look like. It feels old, but it feels practical. And this is the kind of vintage aircraft I want. The Goose, for example, I'm not really bothered about. They made exactly the same version as, as Big Radials, with less radios and less navigation ability. The same early model Goose with the fixed floats, and it's kind of meh. Really kind of meh, to be honest. I don't like it. Okay. Let's get ourselves equipped here for an approach. So it flaps the set for takeoff there. We're going to come in exactly the same way we just did before. So confirming my gear is up. Oh, hi. Duh. My head just wanted to freak out for a second. I do apologize. And an out-of-body experience. <laughs> okay. Bring it our in for the approach. Low and smooth is good for landing this aircraft on water. You can get in and out of some pretty tight spots once you've got some experience, but it really is an aircraft that would, would prefer you to just be gentle. Especially with the way the Sobo's water is right now, you will dramatically benefit from being very smooth on your water landings. You don't want to be just bringing it in and slapping her on the water. You can, but I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> yeah, in real life, the floats will dig in and you'll flip, so don't be aggressive. go for our landing flaps here. We'll actually bring her in through this little inlet here and swing around and put her down. So I'm going to bring the power back. This will let me get lower earlier rather than to come in over the trees. I'm descending quite quickly here but I'm going to level this out as we approach. Coming round the corner. bleed off as much energy as possible here as we're going to bring her down. A little aggressive and I just bounced. There we go. Keep the stick slightly back from aft. Let her roll out. Or float out, I should say. And we're good. Let's knock that boost pump off. It's annoyingly loud. When I hear that beautiful radial sound. The engine sounds in this aircraft are delightful. Let's get that water rid of down. We've got a dock. It's just around the corner here. Let's go let her drift. Might have been a little optimistic in terms of what uh, speed I actually had there, so. Look how it pulls to the right as the engine bites. <laughs> there we go. So to ease along here. A little bit of power. Now unfortunately there's no contactable docks in the sim really. So you kind of bump into them and then go through them. Which is just a weird feeling. But that should be enough for us. So watch out for the uh, pillars there.
kill that. In reality, let her drift in there, and uh, you'd hop out, jump onto the dock, pull the wing in with the uh, line, and you're good to go. Now, I'm just going to steer the nose away here for a second. In fact, I need to put the power back on for a moment. So this is going to be slightly unrealistic. Don't mind me. Why aren't we starting? Come on. Oh, I cut the fuel. That'll be why. Yeah, just, just go this way. Don't mind the fact we're technically on land right now. <sighs> Bloody hell. Come on. Doesn't want to behave itself, does it? Okay, we'll just do this. Nudge. Okay. Now, you will notice when you start up, you'll watch these coming up nice and slowly, that the actual warm-up is very realistic. Let's throw the anchor out, shall we? Okay. Do we have an anchor? We don't. What else do I need to do to get the anchor to show up? The anchor's selected. Everything's off. Huh. I don't even know how to get that to show up. That's quite weird. It must be contingent on something in the aircraft. I'm just not sure what that something is. Are we there? We're not there. Well, that's a shame. But, oh boy. Is this the aircraft I was dreaming for as a bush pilot in this sim? Absolutely. Now, based on what Asobo have said... And what the developer said, uh, Blackbird slash Milvis said in a stream of theirs, they are not permitted to make other variants of the same aircraft. This is why you're only getting the one 310. You're not getting other variants of the 310 that the community's crying about. Uh, this is why we won't see a Turbo Beaver from, from Blackbird, even from them. They want to talk to Asobo to see if they can do it as part of this project within the anniversary, so it'd be like a free update. But externally, they're not allowed to do another Beaver. An Otter is not a Beaver, though. So I expect we will see an Otter and Turbo Otter from Blackbird at some point. I don't know if that's going to happen. I would like to think so. It's not a beaver, is it? We'll have to see. Either way, I am truly in love with this aircraft and I'll be flying it quite a lot. So hopefully you enjoyed this little bit of flying with me today and uh, maybe learn something. Thanks for watching. God, that's a beautiful image on my screen. Bye.